Hello friends, welcome to virtual story time and we're doing our music and rhymes today uh, and I'll have some suggestions some, for some great read aloud books that you can check out at the library and read on your own. But we'll start as we always do with our, uh, our welcome song. So everybody have their clapping hands ready. All right, we clap and sing hello. We clap and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we clap and sing hello. We wave and sing hello. We wave and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we wave and sing hello. We stomp and sing hello. We stomp and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we stomp and sing hello. We'll clap one more time. We clap and sing hello. We clap and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we clap and sing hello. Very nice job, everyone. Thank you for joining me. My name is Ms. Emily. I work at the Mooresville Public Library in Mooresville, Indiana. I'm so happy to have you here for story time today. So today we're going to be talking about food and helping in the kitchen. It's a really um, fun thing to do. I love to cook and it's something that a lot of people enjoy and I hope that you'll give it a try. So I have um, some books that we'll share today. The first book that I'd like to uh, suggest for you to check out at the library and take a look at is called Bilal Cook's Doll. And this is a book by Aisha Saeed and illustrated by Anusha Said. And this is about a young boy, that's Bilal, whose favorite food is dal. And dal is a lentil stew that originates from South Asia, so India, Pakistan, around there. And he wants to share his favorite food with his friends. And dal is a dish that takes a long time to cook, especially the kind that they choose. They choose chana doll, which is the yellow doll. You can see there are several different kinds, yellow, orange, green, brown. But he and his friends all get together and help his dad make doll for dinner. And he really wants his friends to enjoy it. So. This is about Bilal Cooking Doll, and I love books that have a recipe in the back, and this one does. So if you are intrigued and have never had doll before and would like to make it yourself, go to the right page here, there is a recipe that you can uh, follow to try it out, and I will post that in the comments as well so you guys will have a chance to do that. All right, so doll is a dish that sits in a pot and it bubbles and it simmers and all the flavors move together all day long. So we have a song called The Soup is Boiling Up. All right, so we'll start with soup and we'll do a couple of different verses for different things that might bubble up. And you know when uh, some a pot is on the stove and it's bubbling, it makes bubbling... Uh, motions, the water or the, the broth or whatever is in there will make bubbles. So we're going to make bubbles with our fingers here. All right. So the soup is boiling up. The soup is boiling up. Stir slow around we go. The soup is boiling up. What? So we'll do our doll. Okay. So the doll is boiling up. The doll is boiling up. Stir slow around we go. The doll is boiling up. All right, let's see what other sorts of things might boil. Hmm. Have you guys ever had chili before? Chili is a, a beef and bean soup with lots of nice spices in it. So let's try that one. The chili's boiling up. The chili's boiling up. Stir slow around we go. The stir the Chili's boiling up. Oh, sometimes I need to get it right. Okay, let's see. Hmm, what else could be boiling? Ooh, what about a stew? A stew is kind of like a soup, 
but it's thicker and it has lots of big chunks of meat and potatoes and all kinds of good things in there. All right, the stew is boiling up. The stew is boiling up. Stir slow, around we go. The stew is boiling up. Oh, very nice. Let's see, one more verse. I think I really like all kinds of pasta. Do you guys like pasta? Like spaghetti or maybe the bow tie pastas or shells? Mm-hmm. So when you have to make uh, pasta, you put it in boiling water, right? So the pasta is going to boil. All right, I'm going to say we're going to have spaghetti today, okay? The spaghetti is boiling up. The spaghetti is boiling up. Stir slow around we go. The spaghetti is boiling up. Nice job. Very good. All right. So our next rhyme is uh, a counting rhyme, and it's person personalizable. Personalizable. That might not be a word, but we'll go with it today. So uh, you have to think about your name or the people around you and what are their favorite foods. So I had a couple of friends let me know what their favorite foods are. So I'll be doing those. You can customize it, there's the right word, for however you'd like to uh, with the people in your life right now, okay? All right, so we're gonna count one, two, three, four. Miss Emily's at the kitchen door. Five, six, seven, eight. Eating grapefruit from a plate. That's right. Grapefruit's one of my favorite foods. I have lots of favorite foods, and so we try. We'll choose different ones on different days. Okay. One, two, three, four. Evelyn's at the kitchen door. Five, six seven, eight, eating spaghetti from a plate. Mmm, everybody likes spaghetti. So tasty. All right, let's do it again. One, two, three, four, Charlotte's at the kitchen door. Five, six, seven, eight, eating ice cream from a plate. Ice cream. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Mm-hmm. I like mint chocolate chip. I think that's my favorite. All right. One, two, three, four. Ava's at the kitchen door. Five, six, seven, eight. Eating strawberries from a plate. Oh, strawberries. Yum, yum. What other berries are there? There are strawberries. There are blueberries. There are blackberries. There's gooseberries. What other kind of berries can you think of? Raspberries, that's another good one. Nice job. All right, last time. One, two, three, four. Brooklyn's at the kitchen door. Five, six, seven, eight. Eating Brussels sprouts from a plate. Oh my goodness. Brussels sprouts are really good when they're roasted or sauteed. I think they get a bad rap. But Brooklyn and I both know Brussels sprouts are pretty good. Nice. Thank you, guys. That was a great, great uh, rhyme. The next book that I would like to suggest for you guys for a food story time is called One Big Salad, a Delicious Counting Book by Juana Medina. This is a great, it's a very simple book. It's a counting book, but it has really cool pictures. So the pictures are photographs with drawings on top of them. So for example, number one is one avocado deer. So you can see there's a picture of an actual avocado and she drew on eyes and a mouth and some antlers and ears and a body for the deer. So she goes all the way up through 10 and at the end we have one big salad and that is a really fun book uh, to look at. I love the way she makes the animals out of the different kinds of food. So one big salad. There is even a, a whole book is actually a recipe and there's even a recipe for 
some salad dressing at the back with a little piggy lemon and that almost looks like a yeah penguin salt shaker very cute all right so that was one big salad by juana medina a delicious counting book very cool all right we're gonna do a fun chant this one is called fruits and veggies unite and this one takes some um some actions so we're going to form uh, all some different fruits and vegetables with our arms, and then we're gonna do different things to them, okay? This is a great song. It has lots of verbs, a lot of great vocabulary for, uh, for us. And uh, once you've heard it, you'll, you'll know the pattern, and you can make up your own verses if you think of some other things that you can do with fruits and vegetables. All right, so we're going to form banana, form, form, banana, form, banana, form, form, banana, peel, banana, peel, peel, banana, peel, banana, peel, peel, banana, go bananas, go, go bananas, go bananas, go, go bananas. All right. Form an orange, form, form an orange, form an orange, form, form an orange. Peel the orange, peel, peel the orange, peel the orange, peel, peel the orange. Squeeze the orange, squeeze, squeeze the orange, squeeze the orange, squeeze, squeeze the orange. Nice. All right. Form the apple, form, form an apple, form an apple, form, form an apple. Slice the apple, slice, slice the apple, slice the apple, slice, slice the apple. Eat the apple, eat, eat the apple, eat the apple, eat, eat the apple. All right, form the corn, form, form the corn. Form the corn, form, form the corn. Shuck the corn, shuck, shuck the corn. Shuck the corn, shuck, shuck the corn. Pop the corn, pop, pop the corn. Pop the corn, pop, pop the corn. All right, you ready for the last verse? Okay, we're gonna do a potato. Potatoes are kinda lumpy, so you can make whatever shape you want. Form potato, form, form potato, form potato, form, form potato. Peel potato, peel, peel potato, peel potato, peel, peel potato. Mash potato, mash, mash potato, mash potato, mash, mash potato. Yay, fruits and veggies. Nice job. Very good. That's a fun one. I like to do that one. All right. We're going to do another fun song. This one has to do with the things we use to eat our utensils. So we have a knife, a fork, a spoon, and a spatula. Do you guys know what a spatula is? It's wide and flat and it helps us flip our food over. So if you're making pancakes or eggs or something that needs to be flipped, that is the utensil that you want to use. All right. So we're going to make our bodies into the shapes of those different utensils. So how would you make a knife? A knife is long and pointy. You do go kind of like this. There's our knife. How about a fork? We're going to have two tines two times to our fork and a spoon is round like that and a spatula is wide and flat all right I'm a knife fork spoon spatula cha 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 I'm a knife fork spoon spatula cha 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 I'm a knife fork spoon I'm a knife Fork, spoon, I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha-cha-cha. Whew, sometimes
sometimes I get confused on which I'm going to be at what time, but that's okay. However you want to do your arms is good. Do you think we can do it a little faster? All right. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha-cha-cha. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha-cha-cha. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, I'm a knife, fork, spoon, I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha-cha-cha. Whew, that's hard. Can we do it even faster? I bet we can. All right. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha-cha-cha. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha-cha-cha. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, I'm a knife, fork, spoon, I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha-cha-cha. All right, nice job. I bet you guys did a better job than I did. Sometimes my arms get confused as to where they should be. All right, my last book that I would like to suggest to you today is a really fun one called Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow. Now, there's Amy, and she is sitting on top of a gigantic bow. A bow is like a like a dumpling. It's like a little bun that has some things inside, so like a meat filling, or sometimes there's sweets inside. It depends on what you do. And it can be all kinds of different things. But it's surrounded by kind of a, a dough, and they're kind of soft and they're very delicious and Amy she really likes bao and her family likes to make them and so she gets kind of frustrated sometimes because it's not easy to make bao and to form them into the right shape and the right size so she is really convinced that she is going to make the perfect bao um, because sometimes hers turn out to be too small or too big. Sometimes there's too much filling. Sometimes there's not enough filling. Sometimes they fall apart. So she gets kind of frustrating because she has trouble making the perfect bow. And I think that we can all relate to that because sometimes uh, when we're trying something new, it's difficult. We can't be perfect at something the first time we try it, or the second time, or maybe even like the 10th time. Sometimes it takes lots of practice to do something right. So Amy keeps trying and trying, and you'll have to see at the end of the book whether she makes the perfect bow or not. You can see, there, there she is in her family. And again, this book also has a recipe at the back. So if you want to make bao and try it out, you can do that. And this is one of those recipes that takes some, takes some doing. It's not easy the first time you do it, but the result is worth it. So that's Amy Wu and the Perfect Bao. And I should say that that is um, written by Kat Sheng and illustrated by Charlene Chua great book i love this one all right so for our last rhyme for today we're going to do a take on a traditional rhyme so the traditional rhyme was written way back in england there's a lot of um verses to it that have to do with uh things like toast and uh biscuits in a tin and uh, jelly on a plate. That's the one we're gonna use from the old rhyme. And we have adapted it. Uh, somebody online had uh, lots of multicultural uh, food items that they put into this rhyme that I really liked. And since we are talking about lots of different kinds of food today, thought that was good. So um, we'll do jelly on the plate. We'll do naan on the tawa. Naan is the traditional flatbread that you would eat with something like dal in this book. And a tawa is a very flat skillet that maybe a home cook would make their naan on. Uh, if you go somewhere like a restaurant, they might make it in a tandoor, which is a clay oven. So there's some different ways you can make it, but we're gonna say naan on the tawa. 
Tamales are another really great fun uh, food. It is, um, there's a filling that is surrounded by a corn based dough and it's wrapped up in a, a corn husk and it's ooh, delicious when it's been steamed. So tamales in the steamer uh, and then we'll do dal on the pot, in the pot, salad in the bowl because we have the, the salad book and bao in the steamer. Bao are also steamed, okay? And this is one that we do as a lap bounce. So if you have a little one who likes to be bounced in a grown-up's lap, that would be a fun thing to do. Otherwise, you can just bounce yourself on the couch or you can stand up and jump up and down however you wanna do it, okay? All right, jelly on a plate. Jelly on a plate, wibble wobble, wibble wobble, jelly on a plate. Non on the tawa, non on the tawa. Turn it round, turn it round, non on the tawa. Tamales in the steamer, tamales in the steamer. Wrap them up, wrap them up, tamales in the steamer. Doll in the pot, doll in the pot. Simmer, 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 doll in the pot. Salad in the bowl, salad in the bowl. Toss it up, toss it up, salad in the bowl. Last one. Bow in the steamer, bow in the steamer. Eat them up, eat them up, bow in the steamer. Nom, 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 nom. Give kisses to your, to your friend. This is my friend, Scary Squirrel. Thank you for being my baby today, Scaredy Squirrel. All right. So my suggestion for you guys for this week uh, for your activity is to do something fun in the kitchen. Maybe you guys would uh, make a salad together. That's a really great activity for families to do. Little kids can tear lettuce. They can decide which vegetables will go into the salad. You can make those decisions together. If you're feeling really ambitious, you can try a new recipe, something like dal or bao or something else that sounds good to you. Um, I will be posting a link in the comments about um, how to incorporate kids' help in the kitchen at different ages. And this starts from age zero. So newborns obviously can't help in the kitchen, um, but they can observe and you can talk with them and talking to babies, even at the very youngest age, is one of the really great ways that you can help them with their early literacy skills and get them ready for the next steps, which eventually leads to reading and doing well in school. So the more you talk, sing, play, um, write, and uh, tell stories, read, um, the, the more early literacy uh, skills that you guys will have. So that is awesome. Uh, cooking is really great for math skills in addition to being a great family activity. Spatial awareness, knowing how much or how little of something looks like. Uh, obviously you're reading recipes. It's a very sensory experience. So you can use all of your senses when you are cooking. You see the different colors of the food. You can hear what it sounds like when you crunch into a carrot or some celery or something like that. Taste it, you can smell it, and you can feel the different textures. So that's very nice. Um, and then of course, kids are much more likely to eat what they have helped prepare. So if you have some picker, picky eaters um, hanging out in the kitchen together might be a way to kind of um, work on their palate. All right, so thank you. That was a lot to say, but I hope that you have some time to spend in the kitchen and enjoy that. So before we go, we'll do our goodbye rhyme. So we'll get our tickling fingers Ready? Everybody ready to tickle the stars? Okay, tickle the stars and tickle your toes and turn around and
again, tickle your nose. Tickle, 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 tickle. We reach down low and we reach way up high. Story time is over, so wave goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to a story time. Have a good day.